Okay, there are lots of different ways to think about this and different ways to present it. I think this is like the third iteration of, of presenting this material, and each time I've taken a different approach. I think this one is the easiest to get your head around, but other people may think differently, so if you want to find a different uh, presentation, you could just go look at any of my talks or any of David Harvey's talks, and you can probably find two or three different ways of expressing the same idea. But the key point is the algorithm is very, is very simple. You're building two trees, and then you're taking a vector, and you're reducing it down. You think of it as you're reducing it down the tree, but you're taking slightly different actions at the left and the right child. That's what makes it different from the multi-point evaluation algorithm we talked about at the beginning, where it was completely uniform. It did the same thing everywhere. All right. So how long does this take? That's, that's, that's the, the $64,000 question. Well, our initial matrices at the leaves, the M sub Ks, there are other three by three matrices, matrices with integer entries. We can ignore the coefficients of F. I mean, maybe the coefficients of F are huge, but we're gonna express our, co our complexity bounds in terms of N. And as N is marching off to infinity, F is staying right where it is. So in terms, as a, as a, as a, in terms of a complexity expression in terms of N, all the coefficients of F are O of one. What is increasing in these matrices is K. K is running up to N, so K is getting bigger. So each of the matrix entries have, have O of log N bits, and so do the moduli, because we're gonna be reducing modulo uh, N, you know, or modulo Ks. And so the total size of all the matrices we have at the bottom of our initial tree is N log N bits. We have N matrices with log N size entries, and the matrices are fixed size. They're three by three, so there's no, that's just a constant factor, so it's O of N log N bits. To multiply, to multiply all the pair of those things up, multiplication has complexity m of n log n, so we're, we're doomed to gain another log factor. So we're plugging in an n log n into an n log n, and so we end up with an n log squared n. And that's just to get to the next, the one layer up in the tree. To do it all the way to the top of the tree, there's log n layers in the tree, we're gonna end up spending O of n log cubed n time to compute, just to compute the product trees. But the good news is, well, by the time we've done that, we're halfway done, because the time spent reducing down the trees is no worse than the time it's spent computing the product trees. Okay. So this gives a complexity bound of n log cubed n using n log squared n space, which is quasi-linear in n, which means that if we think about how much time are we spending, if we now think, of, or we're, we're, think about the primes p up to n, how many are there? There's n over log n of them. So if we average out the total time across all the primes p up to n, we're only spending something like log p to the fourth time on each prime, okay, which is dramatically faster than any of the algorithms we've seen so far, right? or at least asymptotically. Um, but of course, you can't just pick your favorite prime. You gotta get, your, you know, it's, it's, it's a bulk purchase. You're buying the Haas invariance for all the primes up to n. You can't just pick your favorite one. Okay, but when you do that, you get a very efficient algorithm. And this is not so different from the, factoriza the factorization sieve that you implemented on the first day. Gave you an average polynomial time algorithm, not just an average polynomial time, an average quasi-linear time algorithm for factoring integers. And we don't even know a randomized probabilistic algorithm that can factor integers even in quasi-polynomial time. All of the best known algorithms are sub-exponential. And you, on your first day here, in probably no more than 10 lines of code, wrote an average quasi-linear time algorithm for factoring integers. Of course, you have to factor all the integers up to a given bound. You can't pick your favorite integer and factor it, so it has limited use. Um, and this is somewhat true here with this average polynomial time algorithm for elliptic curves. In practice, we don't use this algorithm because the range, the practical range of n, the biggest we could sort of feasibly make n was maybe like, I don't know, two to the 50, two to the 60. At some point, we're just gonna run out of memory or run out of computers on Earth to run this algorithm on. And in that range, running Mestre's algorithm on each individual uh, elliptic curve would still be faster. And you might say, how could that possibly be true? Well, just to do a rough back of the envelope sketch, let's suppose we have a prime P that's on the order of two to the 64th. The complexity of Mestrick's algorithm, ignoring the log factors, is something like P to the 1 4th. Two to the 64 to the 1 4th power is two to the 16. And even if we throw in the log factors, I guess there was a log squared in there, um, that would multiply it by 36. So it'd be something like 36 times two to the 16. 
this algorithm would be log p to the fourth. So if it's p is 2 to the 64, log p is 64, which is 2 to the 6th, and I raise that to the 4th power, I get 2 to the 24th. And 2 to the 24th is bigger than 36 times 2 to the 16, and that's assuming the constant factors are equal, but in fact the constant factors favor Mestre's algorithm. So in practice, we don't use this algorithm for elliptic curves, even for computing L functions of elliptic curves with very large conductor, but as soon as you go up one genus, at genus 2 already, this, is, this algorithm wins when P is around 2 to the 16, and, when gen and in genus 3, it sort of wins from the get-go. Okay, you, you don't have to do very many uh, point counts before you'd, be, you'd prefer to do this algorithm in a situation where you want to compute um, all <clears throat> count points modulo all the primes up to a given bound n. And I'll just close by mentioning that um, you can improve the space, uh, you can gain a log squared n factor in the space complexity, and that's quite important in practice, because what limits this algorithm is you run out of memory, not time. And you do that by implementing what's known as a remainder forest, and so this, this matrix V that I mentioned that was coming into our product tree, I said we could optionally multiply that matrix V times all the matrices in the product tree, and the reason you might want to do that is in a remainder forest, rather than building one big tree, you actually build something like log n squared of them, and at each one, you need to pass information that encodes you know, V times the product of all the matrices to the left from the preceding tree. And you do that by taking your, matrix, your vector V and multiplying it by the matrix at the top, and that's your input V to the next tree in the chain. And so you sort of have this V jumping along the treetops, you have log, P, log N squared trees, and this doesn't change the time complexity, it improves the constant factors a little, but it improves the space complexity by log N squared. Okay. And so I'm realizing I'm, I'm close to out of time, so let me just uh, wrap up with just presenting the algorithm, and maybe what I'll do is, uh, is invite you on your own to go take a look at the implementation. Um, but it's not complicated. Uh, the implementation of this average polynomial time algorithm is really about the same length as the O of P to the one-half time algorithm using polynomial evaluation interpolation. And I've, and I've given you a full implementation of not just a single remainder tree, but it actually does implement the remainder forests. So the, 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 and you'll see that the um, practical performance is actually quite good. So maybe what I'll do is just scroll down to the end here where you can see I took some timings. So using the, the remainder forest algorithm, it took about 80 seconds to count points on the elliptic curve 11A1 mod P for every prime uh, except 11 and uh, up to 2 to the 20th. I did the same thing using Mestre's algorithm, and it took about 34 seconds, so it was still ahead. Okay, and if I use the built-in uh, implementation of Mestre's algorithm that's available in Magma and also in Sage, it would be much smaller. It would be smaller than 34 seconds. It would probably be something more like 10 seconds. Okay, so still not winning, but I was actually impressed that um, this implementation came that close. It's not inconceivable to me that if you push it a bit farther, it would get even closer. Okay. All right, I better stop there.